I'm just going to make a quick... I'm going to give you a quick question and then I'll leave um, time for others to um, put their hand up as well. This point about um, the agility of our domestic businesses and not having mid-sized businesses. One of the interesting things that's debated here in Australia all the time is what we like to think of as a unique structure so of our economy. So a very big land mass, a bunch of cities on the edge, long distances between them, nothing really of scale if you compare it to global cities. And so this real... Um, bifurcation of our economy. Very big businesses, very small businesses, and not a lot in between. Um, and you've seen in airlines and uh, retail only, you know, sort of fleeting or emerging competition to some of the, the major players. Is that is that a credible explanation or excuse? I mean, do, do we sort of have an, a particular challenge here that is unique to Australia? It's not unique, and I would not... I would not uh, explain that through the geographical structure of the country. I think what typically happens in some countries, and again, Switzerland is, is a good example of the same, is that you lack growth capital. That is, we have good venture capital uh, for entrepreneurship and innovation. And we create these small companies, but at the time when they have to grow, they grow big, then someone else comes and takes them. Okay? And then they take them abroad. Okay? And, and, and they disappear. Uh, Logitech in Switzerland is that, ex that example of a company. Logitech was founded in the city where I live, and I'm sure that you have all heard of Logitech. But uh, by the time Logitech reached a certain size, the Swiss market could not provide the capital that the company needed to become a multinational. And at that time, it moved to the US. And when it moved to the US, it moved with capital, but also it moved with talent. And all the talent went to the US. And I think the same happens in Australia. That's my feeling. That by the time you want to grow to a certain size, then you know you need if you want to expand, then you need to move somewhere else. And you move typically where capital markets are. Questions? Penny. Wait, who's got the mic at the front here, sorry? Arturo, so generous of you to give me the mic. Thank you. Um, thanks for a great presentation. I just wanted to ask a question about the intersection between economic complexity and productivity and the future growth trajectory for Australia. You might be familiar with this study out of the uh, Kennedy School at Harvard last year on economic complexity of the top 133 countries in the world. To cut to the chase, Australia's ranking in that complexity index has dropped over time um, from 57 down to 93rd, um, which means, you know, in effect, we don't really produce in our top five exports. And actually, if you go to our top seven, anything that requires a university degree to make, um, we sit in terms of economic complexity currently below, and I just went in to check this, Uganda and Senegal, um, how does that structure of our economy um, interact with your kind of recommendations and vision for the future of how we can be a highly productive modern economy? Yes. It's a very good question. And in fact, the link between complexity and competitiveness is, is direct in a sense. Because complexity implies that you are touching all aspects of the, of the production cycle or the, or the business system. Okay? including those who generate value added. And that's one of the reasons why Australia has fallen in that ranking, but also one of the reasons why Australia are, is not more competitive than it should. That is, you need to touch all aspects of the value chain, including the last mile, which is where you truly add the value to your product. Okay? Now, when you export commodities, okay, then you may, may lose that aspect of value creation. And that's what we need to integrate. Okay? Increasing the complexity means that you know, again, like countries like Switzerland or the Netherlands have done very well, which is to go from, 
from farming harvesting commodities to the, 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 the fully, fully developed and, and final product. And that's what needs to be done here as well. I think we've got time for one more question. Front here, thanks. Uh, thank you. It's Amber from the Institute of Company Directors. I just had a question about the intersection um, between excessive red tape or regulation of business and competitiveness, and if you had any thoughts about um, the Australian context in that regard. So you need you need regulation, but you need not too much regulation, but good regulation. And obviously, here the principle is very simple. The public sector does not create jobs. That is, the responsibility of creating jobs in a competitive economy is for the private sector. So the role of regulation is how the government and the regulator promote rules so the private sector generates jobs. The rest is less relevant. Okay? So red tape, uh, you know, bureaucracy is, uh, is, uh, is da damaging. Okay? So that's the good regulation. Okay? In Australia in particular, our rankings actually show that there is still a problem with governance rules okay? and promotion of competition, not competitiveness, but competition among companies. Okay? And that's something that I have learned from some of my colleagues here. Actually, when you look at the industrial structure of, of Australia, uh, there is not much competition in many sectors. Uh, and that's the regulation that would be desirable. Okay? Because in most sectors, then you have a very few players. That would be good regulation, for example. Yeah, I think it's um, I think it's a really interesting point, and my sense is one that's actually attracting a lot more attention right throughout the economic uh, bureaucracies uh, and the public sector as well, reflecting on how we can better boost competition and picking up on some of the things that you you, know, you spoke to around a great willingness in the community to adapt and adopt new technologies and uh, and how that sits alongside where our businesses uh, are at. I'm going to just be rude here and just ask one more question. Um, Adria, you talked about, I think, the UAE and China as being countries that are really interested in jobs and less interested in productivity. If you took a snapshot from Michael's charts earlier today, you could draw the same conclusion about us. Um, we've had very strong population growth. It's been underpinning our economic activity and productivity growth has been woeful, as have wages. Um, and you were talking about the benefits of, of population to grow our market and and contribute to diversity and all the rest of it. Um, we, there's actually a real pushback against that, um, partly because of the recognition that, it, that more people is not delivering the productivity, it's not delivering the prosperity from a broader sort of community perspective. So what's, what's your take on that? How would you, you know, what's the story you would tell Australia? You know, I come from a country, Spain, where our biggest problem is immigration, uh, but the immigration that we have, which is sub-Saharan African immigration, is low skill, low productivity, and obviously low education. Okay? You guys have an amazing exposure to a world that is extremely talented and well prepared. That is, for Spain or Italy or Greece or most of the European countries, Australia is a dream because you have access to an amazing talent pool of very well prepared people. And that's one way to go. That is talent attraction at the end. It's an amazing way for the local talent to step up as well and improve their, their skill and then become all more productive. So having access to that talent pool requires that, of course, we focus on the right sectors and the right industries. Um, resolving the social problem with immigration is not something where I can help. <laughs> so, <laughs> because, because I have been, it was worth I, a try. <laughs> I, have been preaching, I have been preaching about that in my, in my world for years. And it is, it is very difficult. It's certainly not the role of an economist. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going to go to infrastructure. <laughs> um, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for. Um, I'm going to say a, a quick thank you. I think um, you tell by the interest here and as you go around Australia in the work that IMD does and in the rankings that they are taken seriously here. Australia loves ranking. Um, we love to see ourselves moving up the league table and uh, really like to give ourselves a tough time when we don't. But... Beneath that sort of, that sort of competitiveness, um, there is a, a real interest in the insights 
offered by um, your, your work, uh, and so it's lovely to be able to have you here uh, telling us firsthand what we need to hear. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you.